Hi, this is Rachel from TLC Inspirations, and today we are making a project that's inspired by the Day of the Dead, which is highly celebrated in Mexico. It's a very beautiful tradition and holiday, and um, I encourage you to really look into it and do a little bit of research. It's very interesting and very beautiful and full of love. Um, I'm doing a felted rendition of um, a sugar skull and love the colors um, and I really wanted to make one for myself. So here are some of the tools you're going to need. These are not all inclusive nor are they all required um, but this is what I used. The These are not attached yet. You can see these are all just kind of placed on here. This is my design. This is what I'm going to work with. Um, I started out with this white background is a different kind of felt than everything else. It's about three to four millimeters um, in thickness and you should be able to find it on Etsy, possibly on Amazon um, or any kind of specialty store um, for wool or felting. Um, all the other colors are your basic wool felt. Don't use any of that acrylic crap. It's not going to work as well. Um, I've also got some wool batting here, which is not necessary, but I had some, so I kind of used it. Um, I already pre-needle felted, you know, the eyes using that. But also um, roving, and I would recommend roving if you want to do any kind of swirls or anything. You can see I did a yellow um, outline on the skull. That is done um, with the roving, and I'll show you how to do that. Also, I have scissors. I have um, felty needles, I have an embroidery needle, and some embroidered, colored embroidery floss, nice bright colors. Um, my foam pad, and I have 1 8 inch nice intense bright pink ribbon. And that's just to attach it to your head. And, oh, and um, when you cut out the skull, you're going to need um, an outline. And so I printed this off the internet, and it gives like a nice skull shape. And I just pin this to my felt and cut around it. So very easy to do. And I think that's all the tools. You can have a needle tool if that is helpful for you, but you don't need it. So let's get started. First, we're going to go ahead and deconstruct our mask here, since I don't have anything attached yet. And the first thing you want to do is if you're going to do an outline on your skull, like I did, that's the first thing you want to um, put down. Everything else will be placed inside this line, so you want to go ahead and set this up ahead of time. <clears throat> and I used roving for this. I have a nice long, I have a nice long piece of roving, and all I'm gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is take a very small amount and I'm just going to pull it all the way down to create a piece that I want. Now don't yank it horizontally because it will come right apart. What you want to do is lay it in your hand and do this. And this is going to mildly felt it enough to where it's not going to come apart and it's going to felt nicer than, say, a piece of wool yarn, um, which has all those little strands that creates kind of a striation in the felting process. Anyways, do this all the way down the length of your piece. And I found that if you take your hand and rub it, like if this, if this side were like your jeans, you're wearing a pair of jeans, go ahead and do this over your jeans because it will happen even faster. Once you've created um, your yarn from the roving that you have, go ahead and lay your foam down and then put your piece over the top of that and start lining it up exactly where you want it. And then you're going to tack it in place using your felting needle. One or two little jabs right to hold it in place so it doesn't go floating around. Okay, so you can see how that works. And that's not gonna be super secure, but it's gonna be secure enough to hold it in place before you do the real felting. And when you do the real felting, you're just gonna do what you normally do and you're just gonna go over and over it and tilt right how you like it. And it's secure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reconstruct my face again for proper placement so I don't felt anything down in the wrong spot. Now 
I'm going to work on my first layer. So I'm gonna pin some of my larger pieces in place and remove the smaller pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna quickly um, needle felt the edges in place, kind of tack them down like I did before so they don't move around. And then I can take the pin out. This allows me um, to move these around if I need to before I start doing my, you know, crazy needle felting where it's going to be more of a permanent situation. And now we'll needle felt them permanently in place, just like we've done on other videos. Okay, now I really don't want to over felt these because it'll start to kind of suck in and shrink a little too much. So I've done a very light felting on this. Um, it's still secure. I can't pull it up at the edges and you can see on the back um, all the fibers that are coming through, which means that it is attached. Um, if you want to felt it down more, you can. I would recommend focusing around the edges and just doing a light felting in the center. Keep your needle straight. And keep pulling this away um, from your foam so it doesn't get buried in there. Okay, again, since this is a um, background, I'm going to do light felting. You can see the little holes in there. Um, I probably am using needles that are a little big for what I'm doing, but I wanted a nice sturdy needle because these are. These are thick layers that I'm going through. Um, but to get rid of the holes, we're gonna I'm gonna run a steam iron over it um, when I'm done with these large pieces and I'll show you that too. Okay, now you can see after ironing, it has smoothed out. It's a little crisper around the edges. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, aside from it's like missing all its features. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do the next layer. So I'm going to go to the flower pieces, probably up top. Definitely going to be needle felting these in place. And these I'm actually going to leave hanging. These, in case you're wondering <laughs> um, what the heck these little things are, all I did is I made some yarn out of the roving, um, one out of orange and one out of yellow. And then I just continued to twist the two yarns together, twist and twist and twist and twist until it started getting really, really tight. And once it starts getting tight, this kind of thing happens. So that's all I did is I kept twisting the two yarns together. And once I got um, them all swirled together, I took the two pieces and I just did a little felting, needle felting, um, right into the very end piece where I wanted it to end. So on this, I needle felted like right into these two yarns in the back and again in the front, and it's not going to come undone. So what I'm going to do to attach these is pretty much the exact same thing. I'm only going to needle felt right here in this little point, right there where my thumb is. And I'm going to leave this part all loose. And that's just because that's how I like it. I'm gonna put it right in the center of where the cheekbone is. I'm gonna run this right over my border. And I'm just gonna needle felt right into where my border runs through. And keep that piece out of the way. And once that I feel like it's secure, I'm just gonna stop. That's not going anywhere. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Also right in the center of the other cheek here. Now we're gonna focus on the flowers. 
These are half flowers. These I just freehanded and cut out in case you couldn't tell. They're kind of some funky flowers. Okay, I'm going to keep it right in front of the border. So I'm going to use my needles right at that point so that I know it's not going to shift or move around um, while I'm felting. And I want to keep it lined up pretty perfectly with that border. As you can see, in the center, I also did the yellow. So I kind of want to look like the yellow is coming and changing and matching in with this flower. Okay, once I have it tacked in next to the border how I want, I'm going to tack the rest of the petals down. Once I have it tacked down in the important areas where things aren't going to flip and move on me while I'm felting, I'm just going to go a little bit faster. As you go, you want to lift your piece because it's going to stick into your foam and start to get buried, so you have to be careful of that. And sometimes the edges will want to curl when you push in front of it, so you want to flatten those out if you need to. That's looking pretty secure. And it runs right along my yellow border, which I really, really like. So now I'm gonna do the same with the other flower. Okay, I decided to first put my um, middle piece. I have those three pieces that are going at the top. I decided to put my middle one in there to point towards the heart to make sure I know where my center is. Um, and now I'm gonna do the other flower. Always keep a close eye on your fingers with these needles because they are extremely <clears throat> sharp and they are barbed so they'll get you. Once you've tacked around the edges, again, just start going. Again, we'll be running the iron over this as well. I am probably going to add a little bit more yellow right here. I see too much red um, showing through. Anytime you want to add or fill a tiny space like that, you are taking a very, very small amount. A few tiny little fibers. And we're just going to, for this one, we're going to roll it. Okay. And you can felt it in to smooth it out a little bit more if you like, but you can see what I'm trying to do there. Okay, I have the top portion in, and now I'm going to go ahead and felt um, the nose in place. I actually felted the green heart on. Um, I should have done this background fabric first and then done it directly on the skull, but I did not. So I'm really just going to felt around the outside edges here just to attach it. I really want this to line up with this up here because I'm putting those two little drops. It's going to be like a line running between the eyes. So I really want to make sure that's nice and straight. And it is. So again, first tacking. And now felting. Um, okay, next I'm going to felt uh, each tooth in right through here. Okay, here's where we are with all the needle felting. Um, the last piece that I'm going to, the last pieces I'm going to needle felt are going to be these little bad boys, which are the little teardrops, the little teardrops that I lined up down below on the chin. So I'm going to needle felt these in, and then we're going to dive into some hand stitching and hand embroidery. Okay, this is what we have. Everything is all um, felted into place. And then I went ahead and hot steamed it with an iron. And this is the back side. So you can see that everything is felted in and attached because the fibers are showing through on the back side on every piece. So looking good. All we have to do now and what we're going to be focused on for the next few minutes is um, hand stitching and embroidering. And I'm going to be focused on the eyes 
and I'm going to do a heart here, and then we're going to attach the ribbon at the sides. Okay, okay, you can see some of the stitching that I've done. Um, I did a blanket stitch and attached this little green heart. And then you can see I did a basic stitch um, using white embroidery thread, kind of like a whip stitch. And that's what I'm finishing up over here. So you can see I'm keeping it pretty simple. And oh, and I added a few little French knots up here at the top. That's about it for the hand stitching or hand embroidery. Um, now we're going to go ahead and add our ribbon. And to do that, I'm going to use um, a piece of ribbon. I recommend 1 8 inch, but I think this one's 3 8 um, And I wanted to use it because it's sparkly. See? Pretty. Um, and we're just going to thread it on to the embroidery needle. Maybe, if I can get this in there. And then we are going to knot the short end here. Okay, and then we're going to thread it through. I'm going to put it right about here on the side. And we're going to insert it from front to back. I'm going to have to work with it a little bit since it's... There we go. Double ribbon. Leave the knotted side in there. Slide the other piece of the ribbon through. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to flip it over and we're going to take it through the other side. Make sure it's even. You can kind of fold it in half so you can see where to put it. And I'm going to put it right about there. Now we're going back to front and we want to pull that other end through. Okay, we're going to slide our needle off and we're going to go ahead and knot this end as well. <laughs> My metallic uh, ribbon here is a little slippery. Okay, and then we're going to pull these two pieces tight. We'll clip those off in a second. And now we've got a nice loop in the back. So we're going to pull it up like this, nice and taut. And we're going to cut it right in the middle, just like that. And now we're going to be able to tie it and adjust it on people's heads when they wear it. Tie it in a little knot or bow or whatever and you have a way to attach it. Let's go ahead and clip these little knot pieces off. Thank you so much for watching and visiting our channel and I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.